think I asked you, how is your uncle serving behind the walls? Or oh, how it be behind the walls, oh Lord, that your people might see only you? How it be behind the walls, dear God, that your people might hear only you? Or oh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our collective heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God has truly been good to each and every one of us. And as we look around and we see things that are happening in our world, in our country, in our cities, in our states, our local communities, we have to take notice that even though all of these things that are taking place might seem a little bit a turmoil, if you will. But through it all, God is in the midst of what's taking place. And God has promised us in his word that he would be with us no matter what the situations are. The handle for our message this morning, Brother John, is more than a conflict. And I use the term handles because when we talk about carrying something, you know, we're carrying our, uh, a bucket, we pick it up by the handle. Yes. We're carrying our, our, our luggage, a suitcase, a briefcase, we pick it up by the, the handle. Yes. When it comes to sharing God's word, it has to have a handle. Amen. You know, we, as, 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 with our names, you know, our names are our they somewhat identify us. So we have a handle for our message as well this morning. Being more than a conqueror. Yes. Now our, our objective this morning is to briefly talk about God's purpose for our lives and our future. I want to just emphasize how God calls us for a specific person a purpose and a reason. And how obstacles, yes, obstacles sometimes get in our way when we try to carry out God's plan for our lives. And how God has to intervene and get us through the difficult times. Now, point one for emphasis, if you will, God calls us for a purpose. He calls each and every one of us for a specific purpose. Yes. Now in our scripture lesson from this morning, taken from Romans 8 chapter, Paul, the apostle Paul, doesn't really apologize for his own spiritual uncertainty. He gives us a good word, a good word in this postmodern period of history because we postmoderns glorify the uncertainty of everything. <coughs> Truth is relative. Values are situation. And morality floats in the murky waters of fickle feelings. So how do we respond with hope to life that is ever changing, always challenging, and almost never ever predictable? We must admit, just as, as Paul does, that we must depend on the Holy Spirit of God and that we don't have all of the answers. We can't comprehend the big picture, if you will. Have you ever tried to put together a picture puzzle? You know those puzzles that, that come in a box and they have a picture of what the puzzle is to look like uh, on the box? And it's many, many pieces, sometimes hundreds or thousands of little bitty pieces. Now some people start by putting the pieces out and, and, and looking for similar colors and then putting those together. Other people will start by trying to get the corners together, get the corners together, and then work from, from that point. Now as you begin to work piece by piece by piece over time, 
the picture begins to develop. Eventually, the puzzle is completed. And it has a picture just like the one on the front of the box. Well, God's plan for our lives is to, is, is, is to conform us to the image of his son, Jesus the Christ. As we let him fit the pieces of our lives together, he transforms them into the likeness of his son. The good news, the good news of the gospel invites us to come clean and to be straight with God and be honest with, with ourselves that we confess our limitations. The next point, if you will, is overcoming obstacles. Overcoming obstacles. The scripture tells us that we don't always know what to pray for. Paul lifts, us, lifts up for us the power of the Holy Spirit who intercedes for us with simple groans and utterances that words really can't express. Sometimes it's just a, mm, 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 a Lord have mercy. You know, sometimes we just don't know what to say. But the Holy Spirit will give us utterances, if you will. You see, we as believers stand by faith, aware of the Spirit's work that brings us through the poisonous vapors of everyday living into the free reality of the mind of God. It's fresh flowing. Fresh flowing. It's a fresh flowing spirit. It's a fresh flowing spirit and love. We come to know that all things, all things work together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. Paul raises the question, what are those purposes? What then is our response? Shall we say cynicism, resignation, or retreat? No, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> none of these. For if God is for us, who can be against us? The good thing about God is that he is always, and I mean always, for us. How do we know this? Well, the word of God tells us in verses 32 through 36 of these scriptures that were read today in our text. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with the same free, with, with him also freely give us all things. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. It is Christ who died and raised from the dead. And now sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, making intercession for us all. Who shall separate us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ Jesus? Shall distress or tribulation, <coughs> shall persecution or famine, shall nakedness, peril, or the war. Yet with all of these things I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things yet to come, nor height, nor death, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. There's no experience beyond the love of God. <coughs> Sometimes death, death or the loss of a loved one, can numb us and cause us to question God's love, his care, and his purpose. But we must remember that he did not spare his own son, and he sent him to die for our sins and to die for each and every one of us. We must continue to believe that God is at work in all things. Jesus is the life, death, and resurrection are the basis, yes, the basis for our confidence. The next point that we want to make is God's intervention in our lives, in our lives, and is making us more than conquerors. <coughs> God intervenes and gives us power through the Holy Spirit to become what he has called us to be, to fulfill that purpose that he has for our lives. 
When we face the harsh realities of life that are unforgiving, brutal, and death dealing, that's when we lean, yes, lean our lives on God, who is for us and whose love we find new, affirming ways of doing life, and that makes us more than conquerors. More than conquerors who are empowered by the power of God's Holy Spirit. <coughs> Anne Landers, the late columnist, if you will, who wrote for many newspapers, responded to a question about the challenges of life by stating that if I were asked to give what I consider the single most useful bit of advice for all humanity, it would be this. Expect trouble as an inevitable part of life, and when it comes, hold your head up high. Look it squarely in the eye and say, I will be bigger than you. You cannot defeat me, for I am more than a conqueror. Yes. This is what Paul meant. Troubles in life are going to come, but your faith in God will move you through the trials of the of life, and because you are more than a conqueror, you will be able to stand. Yes. You see, death is a part of the life cycle. We are born, we live for a while, then we die, and then we move on to eternal life. My brothers and sisters, death cannot separate us from the structure, from separate us. In fact, death is that vehicle that allows us to move into the very presence of God. When the early Christians were being threatened with death and persecution, many of them said thank you to their persecutors, for they said that they were being transported to the very presence of their Savior. You know, my brothers and sisters, there's no way to hurt people like that. <coughs> they, they, they know that they've been set free. They know they've been set free by God's love, and the Holy Spirit abides with them. Only it is more difficult to face life than to face death. But even with life's disappointment, temptation, failures, uncertainty, suffering, suffering, and all of the hardship that it has, it can't separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Angels, even angels. Here Paul is referring to those fallen angels, principalities and powers and spiritual enemies of the, of, for, for, of, true, of the true believers, we are told that we must put, our old, put on the old armor of God. But we do not fight with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts and wickedness in heavenly places. Things present mean that, 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 that what's happening in our lives right now and even future events that even that may occur. No height refers to, 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 to this artificial intelligence age or this space age that we live in now. You see, I've observed so many instances where artificial intelligence is taking the place of people. You know, you go to the grocery store now there's no hotel to check you out. You simply scan it and, and, and move on. You scan and pay and move on. Yes. And I saw something very interesting uh, just the other day. While I was in my office on the golf course, I saw a lawn being mowed by a lawnmower that nobody was pushing. I mean, the lawnmower went up and back, up and back, and it cut the grass. So you don't need anybody to cut your grass anymore. We've got artificial intelligence doing almost everything. There are even cars that drive themselves now. So we are living in an age now, my brothers and sisters, where a computer age, if you will, where things are starting to, to move so fast that we've got to really do some things to try, to try to keep up, even if we go to the moon. That won't be able to separate us from the love of God. Nothing created, nothing that, 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 that will be created can separate us from the love of God, which is centered in Jesus Christ. The salvation that we seek, my brothers and sisters, 
is a beautiful, beautiful love story. A love story. It's the love relationship that we have with our God. We sing a, a song that says, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Well, Paul reminds us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And the in-between, all things work for the good of those who love the Lord. We have to know this. We have to believe this. We have to have that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine and that I'm his. And in all, all things, all things work together for those who love the Lord. And in all things, we go, all the things that we go through in life, we've got to make sure that we seek God first. Seeking God means coming to live in those things that are spiritual and not just truly earthly. Allowing ourselves to live at the love and the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's move. Let's move in a very presence of God. They'll allow us to move in the very presence of our God. I want to share with you a personal experience that I had a few years ago. One of my nieces, and I share this because just last week we celebrated Cancer Survival Week. One of my nieces, whom I love dearly, was diagnosed with cancer a few years ago, and she was given just a short period of time to live. She was only 21 years old. While visiting her in a hospital one day, I saw on the walls of one on a, 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 a poster on the wall in her, her room. And that poster that she had described what cancer cannot do. And I'd like to share that with you this morning. It says that cancer is limited. It cannot cripple love. Cancer cannot shatter hope. Cancer cannot corrode truth. It cannot destroy peace. It cannot kill friendship. It cannot suppress memories. Cancer cannot silence courage. Cancer cannot invade the soul. Cancer cannot steal eternal life. Cancer cannot conquer the spirit because God made me a conqueror. And I can conquer even cancer. There are many cancers in our lives, both physical and spiritual, but we are more than conquerors because of the love of God. God's love, God's love. I, mean, I think, you know, even though she went on to glory to be with the Lord, those words, I think, stuck with her. And even though she transitioned, <coughs> she knew that she was set free. We knew that she had been set free because she had been transported into the very presence of God and God's love. You see, God's love gives us victory. God's love helps us to, to overcome hurt, disappointment, sickness, and even death. It's God's love that gives us power. The power that lets us know that we are more than conquerors. It's that Holy Ghost power that only comes from a relationship with God. You see, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, the songwriter says, very deeply stained within, sinking to ride no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me now, safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When I was yet a sinner, love lifted me. When I was penitent, love lifted me. When I was sick, love lifted me. When I was being persecuted by my enemies, love lifted me. When I was in distress, yes. love lifted me. Yes. When I was unemployed, yes. love lifted me. Yes. When I was hungry, yes. didn't know where my next meal would come from, love yes. lifted me. Yes. When I was thirsty, yes. God love lifted me. Yes. God loved me so much, yes. so much that he gave me victory over my circumstances. Yes. And he made me more than a conqueror. Yes. And he'll do the same thing for you today. All you got to do is trust in God. Trust in God's Holy Spirit, knowing that his love will never leave, nor will it forsake you. 
It's God's love that will lift you up out of the muck and the mire and put you on a solid rock. Oh, it's God's love. God's love that sustains us and keeps us from falling into despair. It's God's love. God's love that lifts us up and lets us know that we are cared for even when we feel lost and alone. It's God's love. God's love that will be with us even unto the end of age. In the age. Love. God's love lifted me. God's love will lift you as well and helps us to know yes, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. You know, to win the battle means that you have won. You know, the different, different team won the basketball game the other night. But God lets us know mm -hmm. that we are more than winners. Yeah. We are more than comfortable. Yeah. We are always going to come out on the winning side. Yeah. All you got to do is trust it. Yeah. Trust it. Have faith. Know that God's going to be with you no matter what you're going through. Yeah. You know, we celebrated uh, yesterday the homegoing service of one of the faithful saints of this church, Sister White, and it was a beautiful homegoing celebration. The people who were there, who, many who testified as to her faithfulness, yes. her love for this church, and the things that she had done over the years, it was those kind of statements that allowed us to see what God can do even in spite of going through troubled times. Love, the love of God resides in us. The love of God stays with us no matter what we're going through. And that helps us to know that if we stay anchored in the Lord, we don't have to worry about anything. As long as we stay anchored in the Lord, we're going to make it. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still there's hope that lies within that we are sure.
Appreciate you doing that. And you stepped in and, and brought us up, brought it on home for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. 